But we begin tonight with a tragedy that is unique to America. Another school massacre, this time in Nashville, Tennessee, where a 28-year-old woman shot and killed three students and three staff members at a private Christian school. The shooter was armed with two assault-style rifles and a handgun. The Nashville Police Department said the shooter was a former student at the school who identifies as trans. The children who were fatally shot are Evelyn Dykehaus, Hallie Scruggs, and William Kinney, all elementary school age. The adults are Cynthia Peak, Mike Hill, and Katherine Kuntz, all in their 60s. Kuntz, shown here, was the school's headmaster. President Biden, who called on Congress to act on guns after Sandy Hook, Buffalo, and Uvalde, had this to say once again after Nashville. It's sick. It's heartbreaking. Uh, a family's worst nightmare. We have to do more to stop gun violence. So I call on Congress again to pass my assault weapons ban. The U.S. has surpassed 100 mass shootings in 2023, and we're only in March. These are shootings that can happen anywhere, a school, a hospital, a church, a cemetery. And it's not just the typical young white men with unfettered access to high-powered weapons who are doing the shooting anymore. The shooters lately now have included the elderly, people of color, and as we saw today, a trans woman. The only thing that is consistent is that it is the guns that kill our children, that terrorize them, that force them to do shooter drills in their elementary school classrooms. It is why our babies are patted down and enter through metal detectors. It's why arming teachers is an actual debate in America. Cue the thoughts and prayers tweets. And how the killing must end by Republicans who do nothing about gun reform. Instead, they honor a perverse interpretation of the Second Amendment over human lives. And in the meantime, they create a fake moral panic over drag shows. But it is not the guns that pose a danger to our kids. Well, they, I mean, they say it is not the guns that pose a danger to our kids. They say it's the books. It's the wokeness, which is why in Tennessee, where today's rampage occurred, a school district once removed 327 books from library shelves that featured LGBTQ characters and themes. A school board there also voted unanimously to remove the Pulitzer Prize winning graphic novel Mouse, which details the horrors of the Holocaust. The Tennessee chapter of Moms for Liberty, a book banning dark money group, also opposed Ruby Bridges Goes to School an autobiography of the first black child to integrate a New Orleans school at six years old in 1960. It is a children's book, by the way. And it's not just Tennessee, of course. It is Florida, the land of Don't Say Gay, where the Disney movie Ruby Bridges, once a staple for Pinellas County Black History Month lessons, has now been removed because one parent complained that the film would result in students learning that white people once hated black people during a time when literally... Some of them did. Other states are taking Ron DeSantis's lead. In Wisconsin, the song Rainbow Land, a duet by Miley Cyrus and Dolly Parton, has been banned from a first grade concert. The reason is not clear. Could it be Miley or maybe the existence of the word rainbow? We don't know. But the terrifying thing is it could be anything these days. How we think, read, talk, learn, sing. It's almost like conservatives are more concerned about what kids read than what kills kids. This moral panic is being framed by the right as their attempt to protect children, which kind of falls apart when they do nothing about the thing that turns a child into a corpse. Books don't kill children. Drag shows don't kill children. Guns do. And if that doesn't piss you off, Brett Cross, whose son was killed by an AR-15 in Uvalde, would like to have a word. Have y'all had enough yet? In Nashville, three kids so far have been pronounced dead. Three adults have been pronounced dead from a school shooting. When is enough enough? If this doesn't make you sick to your stomach, then you're a piece of Joining me now is Shannon Watts, founder of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, and Michelle Goldberg, columnist for The New York Times. Uh, thank you both for being here. And Shannon, I will start with you. There, there, you know, it is starting to become um, almost randomized, uh, random, I mean, it's, or sort of routine, I should say, that we have now at least, what, one to two mass shootings a week in this country, or over 100. Um, a lot of things about these shootings are the same. Um, they tend to have been 
young white men between 18 and 30. There haven't been very many women. Um, there clearly obviously haven't been very many trans women. This is also rare. But we have started to see it broaden out. We've had Asian American, older people, African Americans. You know, it, it's becoming... It's it's so scattered that it can happen anywhere, anytime. But once again, it's happened in a school. Your thoughts? Well, look, this is sadly the logical outcome of 400 million guns in this country, and very few gun laws. Right? If, if gun laws, if, if guns made us safer, we'd be the safest country in the world. Instead. We have a 26 times higher gun homicide rate than any peer nation. And if we look at the state of Tennessee where this happened, this is a state that has had every single chance to strengthen their gun laws, and they've done the opposite. In fact, in 2021, Governor Lee signed permitless carry, a law that allows people to carry hidden loaded handguns in public without a background check or training. He signed that into law and celebrated it at a gun manufacturing plant, right? This is a state where they have incredibly weak gun laws and gun homicides have spiked 110% in the last decade there. At what point do more guns make us more safe? The answer is never. And that is why we need lawmakers to pass stronger gun laws. The data shows they work. And so when we elect lawmakers to make laws, we don't elect them to give us their thoughts or their prayers. We elect them to act. And that is what we should expect as constituents. And to stay with you just for a second, Shannon, I mean, the, 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 the congressman that represents this district, um, his name is Andy Ogles. Um, he's a Republican. He represents this district where Covenant School is located. I just want to show a picture. You tweeted out a picture of, um, I guess this was his Christmas uh, card. There it is. There he is standing in front of the Christmas tree with his wife and, and children. One of them has a book, which apparently also are things that Republicans think are dangerous. Uh, but the rest of them have guns. And this has become like a common thing among Republicans is posing with guns, sort of fetishizing guns, wearing AR-15 pins in Congress and really making their love and adoration for guns kind of their primary uh, political, you know, sort of this is their symbol. Their symbol is the gun. Uh, it's very warlordish. Um, what do you make of his statement today, uh, stating his devastation that he and his family feel at the Covenant School shooting and, of course, sending his thoughts and prayers? It's a sickness. You know, there, there are three issues here in this country. Our lax gun laws, electing people who support the gun lobby and gun extremism, and then this culture, right? A culture of guns for anyone, anywhere, anytime, no questions asked celebrating this, these guns as though they are toys. I mean, that's what that photo looks like. And it, it is really incumbent on us to elect people who have a conscience, who would not celebrate drunk driving or the use of op opioids, other things that kill people. Somehow guns have become acceptable. And that is in part because we have something else that no other peer nation has, and that is a gun lobby. And we have allowed gun lobbyists to the table to help write gun laws. And of course, they don't do that to protect public safety. They want to write policy that protects their profits. They make billions and billions of dollars selling these guns, in particular semi-automatic rifles. And it is no surprise that the shooter today had two AR style, uh, two AR-15 style rifles. Uh, and a handgun and an air style uh, handgun as well. So, you know, these weapons of war that we've allowed on our streets are now being used to kill our kids. And Michelle, you know, it, this is coming at a time when the First and Second Amendments are in a real tension, right? It, it, not real tension among the public. I mean, like, it's like an 80-20 issue. Even gun owners overwhelmingly want stronger gun laws. It's just, you know, as Shannon said, the gun lobby and the politicians they own that, that are refusing to let it happen. But you have this in the state of Tennessee, which, you know, ironically, is the Scopes monkey trial state, right, where they used to have a law against teaching evolution in public high schools, in public schools. They now are racing to an enact these First Amendment limiting laws to limit things like drag shows. You have rampant book banning. I think Tennessee might be the most aggressive book banning state, even more so than Florida. And so they're essentially saying it's too dangerous to allow children to be exposed to a drag show. A drag queen is, in, is dangerous to children. These books are dangerous to children. But when it comes to guns, they're like, no, put more guns where children are. It is it is an irony that's hard to get away from during this time of moral panic over books, history, and drag shows. 
And I fear that the identity of the murderer here is only going to reinforce that. I mean, this is, you know, we have a lot of mass shootings in this country. It's still shocking when it's elementary school children. It's, you know, I have, and these are three nine-year-olds. I have an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old. I can barely think about it. But, you know, I think that from, whenever we have one of these shootings, in general, the gun lobby and the people aligned with it, the Republican Party, want to talk about anything but guns. You know, sometimes they want to talk about mental health. Sometimes they want to talk about doors and why doors were unlocked. They want to talk about, um, you know, and, and, you know, illegal immigration. If it's not, if it's a Muslim, they want to talk about um, radical Islam. And the fact that it's a trans person, I think, is only going to reinforce this moral panic. Is going to make it seem as you know they're going to feel that they are um, under threat, under siege from this group of people that has been, you know, I think trans people in this country are already they are being demonized and terrorized. And just as you see when, you know, during when there's, for example, a Muslim killer, it redounds on you know, ordinary Muslim civilians. I think that we're going to see something similar here.